We are inside uh, room, one of the barracks inside the fort uh, that we don't really know a whole lot about what it would have served as. Uh, might have been some sort of officer's quarters or non-commissioned officer's quarters. In our case, however, we are using it uh, nowadays to represent the sutler's quarters. A sutler was the fancy military name for a civilian merchant or storekeeper. And in the case of the armies, sutlers or storekeepers would make a contract with the colonel of each regiment to basically be the exclusive uh, provider of extra goods for the people in the regiment beyond what the army was supposed to be giving them. And up here at the fort, well, that would then create an interesting situation, however, there being two sutlers because along with the military sutler or storekeeper that would come up to provide uh, mostly additional food and drink to the soldiers and their families here beyond what the army was supposed to be giving them along with maybe some small personal items like pipes, tobacco, playing cards. Up here at the fort, however, being right on the border between uh, the white settlements and the Indian lands, this made the perfect location for a fur trade operation as well. So. We know that uh, all throughout the fort's history, both as the British fort, in between the French and Indian War, and then the coming American Revolution, and then during the American Revolution as American fort, there was always some sort of fur trade operation or multiple fur trade operations going on here at the fort. You would have uh, found uh, the soldiers and their families coming to their particular sutler to get the things they wanted, but the Indians who were coming to trade the furs for the goods they wanted would be coming to uh, the sutler that we show you here and they could then be trading the furs for the different goods that the sutler had for sale inside. Uh, some of the chief things the old Indians were always coming for all throughout the history of the fur trade would have been blankets, cloth of various sorts, any sort of pre-made tools or weapons and then uh, what is often referred to as Indian trinkets, that would have been different sorts of jewelry, beadwork, or any sort of decorative items that they could have put on themselves or on their clothing to make them look a bit nicer and a bit fancier. During the winter months, uh, the fur trade sutler would probably not see a whole lot of business going on because this would often be the time when the Indians would be concentrating on hunting both for food for their families and also for the pelts, uh, both hunting and, and trapping, depending on the sort of animal that they're going after. And quite often the fur trade would work in a system where the majority of uh, the cultivation or gathering of the pelts through hunting or trapping would be done during the winter months. And then come the spring months, the Indians would come in with the various pelts and begin the actual trade operation. And then of course, continue that on through the rest of the year as well as they could. Another reason uh, in the uh, winter of 1777 to 1778 that uh, the fur trader might not have seen quite as much business is the fact that uh, the Continental Army had successfully recruited uh, a fair number of Oneida warriors to go down and assist General Washington's army encamped at Valley Forge with scouting missions and raids, and they actually did get involved in one pitched battle with the British prior to Washington and his army leaving the Valley Forge area. So while uh, during the winter months here you wouldn't see much going on necessarily uh, with the fur trade operation, but uh, the military sutler providing the food and drink uh, and other personal items for the soldiers and families here probably continued to see his business going on all throughout uh, the uh, various uh, times of the year, whether it was the warmer weather or the colder weather, that being, of course, as long as the families and the soldiers had money in order to pay that sutler. Uh, the one biggest uh, change we've had to implement here is having the sutlers, both fur trade and military sutlers, set up inside the fort. Uh, we have plenty of documentation to show that both during the British occupation and the American occupation, uh, particularly the fur trade sutler, was definitely outside of the fort because there was always restrictions on the number of Indians that would be allowed 
to come inside the fort, even if they were considered to be allies of either the British or the Americans, and the military sutler would have definitely been outside the fort. It was very unlikely they would have given up any of the very limited quarters they had inside the fort uh, for the use of someone selling things to the soldiers and would have instead reserved that for the use of soldiers and officers.